Welcome to this vlog in September. It is early autumn and uh, this is the time where the trees are preparing themselves to go into the dormancy season. There's a little while till we reach that point, but right now it is uh, the growing season that is slowly fading away. The days get shorter and it is slowly getting a little colder. The less light will produce less growth. Therefore, the deciduous trees like this one, a corkbark elm or this Japanese maple, will begin to reduce the growth and instead produce sugars that will go into the roots for winter storage and survival of freezing periods. A little bit different with the conifers, and this is a chimpaco juniper, and this will still be growing, but especially the roots, the same goes for the deciduous trees, the root growth will continue until it gets much colder. But the conifers still produce a lot of energy and they will still push a little bit of growth. This Jimpaco juniper I need to trim a little because it has uh, outgrown the shape at this time and I have to uh, reduce some of the foliage. If I reduce all the foliage on the tree like this, also on a Japanese maple, it will be too late to do that because it will push out a lot of new growth and this will not be strong enough to, to go through the winter without damage. So I have to reduce a little and keep some more so that the rest of the foliage will keep back new growth. That is a balance you have to consider when you're beginning to prune your trees at this time of the year or even in winter. Don't prune so much that you will push out new growth that will not survive the winter. We are going into the dormancy season slowly. It will be in the winter time. Everyone needs a rest. We need a rest in the night. Trees need a rest during the winter time. And this is because we don't have the energy or capability to just push out running all the year round. We have to rest. The same goes for the trees. Therefore, the sugar production is going into the roots to survive the winter if it is uh, a very cold winter. In Northern Europe we often get a little bit of freezing and it can be with great variation, so we have to take care about that. Winter storage I will go back, get back to in a later vlog. But today we cannot do so much. We have to slow down our actions and that includes feeding. I have stopped feeding in the end of August because I don't want to push any new growth that is too fragile for the winter time because you would just lose it anyway and you will weaken your tree. So be patient, slow down the growth so these can go into rest and we can later, when we reach uh, October, November, enjoy the full colors of deciduous trees changing the leaves from red to brown and yellow. But today we can look at what we cannot do and that is the slowest demo in the world and it will be even slower today because I will do nothing but we will just tell what I want to do a little bit later. Let's get back to this very, very slow demonstration of this uh, Potentilla fruticosa. It has been a slow work up to now and it will be continuing being slow. What has happened until now, it has pushed this box is actually a bit too heavy for this. It has pushed out a lot of new growth. It can be very tempting to try to reduce this at this time of the year because it's a bit, little bit lush and it doesn't uh, look very orderly. But we need to take care of, of what we are doing and we have to do it in the right steps. One of the slowest things to develop is deciduous trees because you have to cut back and uh, make them produce new buds and, and new growth all the time. And you always feel that you get a step back instead of one in front, two steps back and one front. And Therefore, you feel that you are going extremely slowly with this, and that's true. It takes a lot of time to develop a tree like this. And if I begin to cut back here, I will begin to produce new growth. This will be, as I told before, too fragile for the winter time, so I will just let it be. Then later in winter, we can begin to prune a little back. The tree will be protected from heavy frost, so it's safe enough to cut it back at that time if we just protect it from too much frost. Then we can reduce a little and not push any new growth at that time of the year because the tree is in its dormancy. But what we can do a little later is taking care of this inner part of the trunk. The problem with uh, potentillas is that even that the, hard, the wood is extremely hard 
and you cannot uh, bend a, an old branch without breaking it, it will snap, then it is easily to rot. Normally you would think that very hard wood would stay a long time and be protected up against rotting and soft wood will be easier to decay and rot away, but it is not true. It all depends on the oils or the missing oils in the wood. The old dead wood here has no protection and it will rot easily and people lose potatillas because of this if not taking care of the dead wood or uh, the, uh, especially on a hollow trunk like this one. So what I will do later, not today because this is, uh, it has been raining the last 14 days and the wood is uh, soaked with water and it needs to be dry before I apply a sealant to protect it. I will apply a kind of a wood protection layer of plastic. It is a special product made for, for bonsai. It probably has been used for other things too, but it will stop any rotting. It will seal in uh, the dead wood with a thin layer or maybe thicker, depending on how much you put on. I have to try that out and it's see if it's visible or not. It has to look as natural as possible, but, but it will seal the tree so no moisture can get in. But therefore, the, the, the tree where you apply it, the dead wood where you apply this, has to be bone dry, because if you leave any uh, moisture behind, it will just continue rotting behind this sealant. It's like when you are painting a, a wet chair, it will just uh, not work because the moisture will stay in the wood and it will rot. So we will try to do that later, but it has to be bone dry. So today I will do absolutely nothing with this tree and this is what you have to remember to do sometimes. Take care of what you are doing and when you are doing it. And maybe you spotted it in the background of me. The cat is on the roof of the Tokonoma enjoying itself. What we can do today is reducing this foliage at this Shimpaku juniper. It is a small mame bonsai that I bought in uh, Japan as a pre-bonsai in 2005, that is some years ago. It has been growing in small pots ever since and it can continue doing this for several years if I just take great care of how I take care of it. So it is about going very slowly. There's uh, two different kinds of growth on this one today. There is uh, the normal foliage that we want on a Shimpaku juniper like this, this uh, lush and uh, very fine delicate foliage, and there is some more sticky foliage. And this is the tree that is going through a little bit of a stressful period or just a forceful growth period, trying to push out new growth. And the young growth, the juvenile growth, ha often looks like this. It has these uh, a little bit more sticky foliage, the or actually the original foliage before this was developed. This is what we want, this is what we want to reduce. If I reduce this, this will get more growth and more strength. And uh, this is what you have to do, replace some foliage from time to time. As it also is visible, there is uh, some dead needles in between here and we have to clean this up. This happens naturally because it is a growing season and when this overshades this part some of this will get weak and die off. It also is very natural for a conifer to replace its old growth with new growth and then the old growth will die off and this takes two or three years before the old needles die off. That is completely natural and nothing to worry about. This is what happens with every tree and I have needle drops from the big trees above me and this is what happens during summer and autumn. They shed off some of the old growth to make place for new growth. This also feeds and nurses uh, the soil beneath them and we have an ecosystem going. So it's a natural thing, we just have to clean that up because we want our bonsai to look neat and clean and aesthetically pleasing. So I will take a pair of tweezers and start just cleaning out what is dead and then I will analyze what I can remove and what I want to stay. As you can see here, we have a piece of dead wood here. This is something I have made. Originally there was growing uh, a bunch of foliage or needles down here. 
I had to remove them at a point because else the tree was just continue growing and getting bigger and bigger. And I tried to keep this as a small mum bonsai as long as possible. Therefore we have to replace some of this growth with new growth further back and maybe we will do this drastically. We have new growth coming from here, but I'm start cleaning up before I do that part of the work. Now it's time to just clean out any dead branches. So we start removing anything that is unnecessary, that we're sure we can avoid. we have no use for. And it is a tiny tree and difficult to come in here. And now I will see the important main branch here has to stay. Then we will take some of this small weak growth. open up so we get light and air inside and uh, that is what is essential to get new growth and back budding is that you open up so light can come in and here we have small new buds coming out. I'm taking care not to remove too much at once because uh, anything we can use for future growth will have to stay. Slowly I'm opening up this and see what we can use and what we can remove. And I'm taking away what is going directly upwards because this will not look naturally in the design. And we have at this point some clustering here because we have too many branches growing from the same point and this will just uh, make like a hand fist here and it will not look pleasing so we will get a big knot here and I have to reduce that and I have this branch I can use instead of this clustering here so I will take away a little drastic maybe it will look like on a small tree like this this knot trying to reduce it and keep the growth that is growing down so we keep this cascade style tree going. Cleaning this up a little and now this part is visible too. A piece of dead wood that we can use as a feature of the tree. And here are some weak but and remove anything that is weak because it will just be in the way and we can push the growth to some of the stronger parts instead. Here we have this uh, problem with too many buds growing from the same point and we get this thickened up part. So I will reduce this just a little and uh, make it as a connecting gin to this part. But I will not do very much because with junipers you have to do it little by little and wait for it to heal up. If you are going too hard on this you might get some sap withdrawal that will hurt the buds behind it. And it is with junipers that they are not very good at healing over a wound. They will often withdraw and make the callus a little behind where the cut is. So there's a difference between junipers and conifers at that point. You could, uh, with good reason, ask if I will begin to seal this with some lime sulfur to prevent it from rotting. I will not because I will place this uh, in a dry area in the greenhouse so it will not be a problem. And it's better to take this slowly instead of cleaning it all up at once and then risk something to die back. And uh, a second question is, of course, if it is this the right time to trim or to reduce branches uh, on an evergreen like this uh, Chimpago juniper? It is, because 
I am not making a total restyling and I'm not making a really hard pruning back on anything. I'm just removing some of the superfluous branches and trimming it back uh, in position so this growth will take over. There's a difference in doing this at this time of the year and in spring. If I had to do a total recover and has to pinch back uh, all the foliage on a chimpaco juniper like this one or any kind of juniper, the, this time would be the wrong time. Then you have to do it in the spring and the early summer where you still have the strong growth and a lot of photosynthesis. At this time of the year the growth is slowing down, but what, I'm not doing a total recover, I'm just reducing a few branches and I'm still keeping all the strains in this part, so this will just take over from this, and this is not weakened. There's a difference in weakening all the tree by cutting it hard back or just reducing some parts of the tree. Therefore you can do it now and the scars will heal over nicely when you have done this in early autumn because there's still growth in the tree and it has time to recover and uh, heal up wounds. Not totally, but it will be done slowly over the next month. The scars will still heal up during the next time. Now it's time to find some wire and begin positioning this branch in a better position than it was because we have removed some other branches and have to cover this up a little. I am using a thin copper wire for this. I maybe have to place it as a double wire simply to get strength enough. The copper wire is thinner than the aluminium wire and stronger, so it's easier to apply on a small juniper like this. Not advisable always to do that on deciduous trees because they have a tendency to have a little bit more fragile bark and their uh, copper wire can hurt the bark. So instead of that, use the softer aluminium coated wire for deciduous and uh, you can use the stronger copper wire for evergreens and conifers like the juniper and the uh, pines. And this is the point where it becomes tricky to wire a tree like this because there's not much room. I place a double wire because I don't have a thicker one, so I just make a double wire that I can add the strength to the tree properly. When I'm applying the wire to this branch, I have to connect it to another piece simply to be able to hold it. So I take it around this piece of deadwood and attach it like this. And then I can begin to wire my branch. I have to sit it very close to the branch and it has to start on top of this because I want to bend it down. And here we just have to go slow and careful because there's only this branch to work with and therefore it would be a catastrophe to break it. Then I just apply it in a 45 degrees angle. This is where the strength of the wire is working best. And cutting it here. And then I can begin to reposition this branch. And I will do this just slowly. I want it to come in the position of the former part. And I can, when I'm having this double wire, I can split it onto two branches and put them in each of their direction. And this will be an initial wiring, not very precise because what we want to do here is just putting this in a new position. We're not making a final tree here, we're just opening up spaces and new positions where light can come in and then by further cutting in the future we can begin to get a better growth and a more tidy tree. So this will just be for now this is a job for the future to wait for new growth to appear and then we can begin pinching a little more this top branch because 
is simply too much growth. And then we have all of this to take over from the things we have reduced down here. I have reduced some of this juvenile and strong growth to push the energy into this weaker but more beautiful growth instead. So take care of the juvenile growth, remove it if it is necessary, if you don't have to grow new branches, and then you will strengthen the part that has this more fragile, uh, mature growth that is weaker, but what we want on a Simpago Juniper. Just before I end this vlog, I will take you on a little trip to a local bonsai enthusiast who had his open house and uh, I will show you a little about what was happening there. I hope you enjoyed this free vlog from the garden and there will be one every month so you can go in and sign up for a subscription and follow the garden throughout the year. There also will be a monthly theme where we, I will go in depth with a subject. Next time it will be about conifers versus deciduous, how you train them and the aesthetically differences. You don't style them in exactly the same way. There is uh, some natural growth habits you have to uh, take into account when you are styling your trees. We'll go in depth with that in the next theme. I hope you enjoyed this one and we will finish up with a little reportage from this open house at Martin Nielsen's Bonsai Garden.